Hello and welcome to today's webinar, CAS Inspire Getting Girls Into Computing. My name is Wendy Piccinini and I am the CAS Community Outreach Manager for communities across London and the East of England. I'm the host for this session and I'm also joined by my colleague Suzanne Cray, who is also a CAS Outreach Manager for the South West. And Suzanne will be moderate, moderating today's session and bringing your question to today's panel. This webinar is part of the CAS Inspire series. CAS Inspire is a series of resources consisting of live webinars with expert panelists discussing topical computing education matters in which the audience can get involved. Also featured are videos teaching computing concepts podcasts and careers inspiration webinars. During the session, please use the question window on the right hand side of your screen to ask questions. All attendees are in listen only mode and the top of the window has an orange rectangle which can be expanded or collapsed and gives you further options. If you'd like to download a copy of this webinar and or the slide deck, both will be available on the CAS website in due course. If using social media, media, sorry, the hashtag for the event is hashtag CAS Inspire, and we'd love you um, to talk about um, what we're talking about in this event. So yeah, please do tweet um, about uh, your responses to this webinar. During the webinar, please type any questions into the question window and at the session, if time allows, Suzanne will pose these to the presenters. So. Without further ado, I will introduce the panel. This afternoon, I'm delighted to be joined by Charlene Hunter from Coding Black Females, Ramat Tijani and Hayley Laidlaw-Wilson. So Charlene has been a software developer for over 10 years in a range of languages and technologies. She is the founder and CEO of Coding Black Females, a non-profit organization to inspire provide opportunities and showcase the talent of black women in tech. She's also the co-founder of Meetup and Code, a community to bring developers together and code together. Charlene is passionate about increasing diversity in tech. Ramat Tajani is a multi-award winning women in tech, marketing strategist, podcaster and confidence coach. She has over 12 years of experience across a range of industries, including technology, personal development, marketing, recruitment, and not-for-profit. She is currently an education program lead for Europe, Middle East, and Africa at Amazon Web Services. And last, but by no means least, Hayley has spent 15 years advising financial service organizations across the globe on their digital and IT strategy and architecture. She is the founder of educational startup Sniff and Snails, a STEM ambassador, school governor, and Prince's Trust mentor. She loves creating crafty code creations with her two girls, aged four and seven, and she also loves cheese with honey on toast. <laughs> right, okay, so without further ado, I'm gonna hand over to our first presenter, who is uh, Charlene. Um, over to you, Charlene. Hi there. Yes, I'm very excited about today's session. Um, I am just going to share my screen so that, oh, there we go. <laughs> Can you see that? Fantastic. Okay, so I'm going to talk about um, coding black females, the work we do there, and how that could be beneficial um, to help getting more girls into computing. So firstly, I'm going to quickly introduce myself. So I'm a software developer, have been for the last um, 10 years, but I've also um, got quite grounding in technology and maths. Um, I did uh, maths, further maths and physics when I was at school for A-level. I then went on to do mathematical sciences and computer science at the University of Birmingham before starting my career as a, a, a technology consultant, really. So that's working at BAE Systems initially. I then went on to do contracting 
and running an academy training program at an organization called Made Tech. And currently I'm working at Coding Black Females, but then also I'm a technical director at an organization called SAM Software. In terms of the work I do with communities, I set up Coding Black Females in 2017, really to enable more black women to get into the industry, but also to ensure that they can progress through the industry as well. I also do work with other communities, so Meetup and Code is something I set up um, back in 2018 and I now support another organisation called uh, Black Devs UK, which I've been a co-organiser for since 2019. And last year we created a Black Coder Coding Bootcamp, which is a bootcamp to enable more black women to develop their skills and enter the industry. And a lot of those women that have trained with us have now been uh, placed into technical roles. So to give you an overview of Coding Black Females and what we do, we have 5,000, around 5,000 global members, and that's people that are either um, in technology or they're looking to get into technology as well. Um, I always say, you know, we've got people really across the range of where they want to be. A lot of people are looking to career change, and a lot of the more experienced people are the people that go out and then do support work within schools and within the community. We've got quite a large network and a lot of companies who are really interested in making sure that they can work alongside us to ensure that more people can develop their skills within the tech space. And then with the Black Coder Bootcamp, that was something that we set up last year to train at that time 50 black women to get into the tech industry. We run a 30 week program, which is a part time coding bootcamp for people to become full stack developers and that's in a range of technologies and what we've seen there is that by doing the outreach with a lot of the parents a lot of the um, children of those parents have actually also become interested in in developing their skills and also getting into the tech space too so to elaborate more on coding black females people have often asked me why coding black females why is this important to you on the coding side, that is something that I'm just generally very interested in. I really enjoy technology and I've always enjoyed coding. Um, and obviously also the tech industry is growing immensely as well. The reason that we focus on black people within the tech space is that unfortunately at the moment, black people only make up 1.9% of the tech industry and that number needs to increase. Along with the fact that black women only make up around 0.7, I think it's around 1% at the moment as well. And women, again, around 20, 25 percent make like making up of the industry. So what we're really trying to do is make sure that one, people can see visibility of the, the people around them. So the black women around them, the women around them, but also to encourage more people to know that this is an industry that they can be part of. So in terms of what we do, we've got this initial space where we're really focused on growing the community. And that is connecting people who are already in the industry together but then obviously also enabling more people to get into it too. So we do quite a lot of work around showcasing that talent, enabling people to, to learn from each other. And we do a lot of uh, webinars, we have a podcast and a lot of networking events as well. We also work with companies to support their recruitment. We're not a recruitment company, but we'll support with their shortlisting and making sure that we can find the right people for roles. So that could be a lot of banners around internships and apprenticeships, but also more experienced roles too. And then we have a lot of events. We actually have an event running right now at the same time as this, which is an intro to Java workshop, but we've got a lot of events that we're running. Um, typically those events are run with other adults, but we do also run things with um, children as well within the community. And we offer mentorship and training to people. So on the mentorship side, we run 12 week mentorship programs a lot of the time to enable people to have somebody that they're paired with from organizations where they can really develop their skills and we'll support them with being paired with other people within coded black females as well. And then we run a lot of technical training programs and they could be people learning those skills to enter the industry or skills once they're in it to develop their skills further. And we also a lot of the time procure uh, many training programs that we can then allocate to our members too. So what do I think about girls into computing and what work have we been doing already? One of the things that we've been looking at is the courses that we can run for young girls who are interested in being in technology. So over the last um, couple of years, we've run a scratch course for girls. 
And on this course, we've brought a lot of girls together who have been able to learn um, different skills about the building blocks of coding, and that will generally be during their evenings. We found that they found that very interesting. And I think for me, one of the exciting things is going along to one of those sessions, finding out about their motivations and, and what excites them about coding. And for them, it's seeing that visibility, seeing that there are other black women in the industry, that's inspiring for them to know that this is something they can do. But also we asked the question, how do you think your friends would describe you? And one of them said that they would be viewed as fearless because they're doing this. And we're trying to do what we can to keep those girls fearless. We run other courses as well. So we have a web development course that we've run for young people, and that's aimed probably more at the 16 um, plus year olds. And that's a course where people can really have some tangible outcomes. I find that things like Scratch and, and web development are great because people are able to see the outcomes of the code that they build. So again, that's using those evening sessions to do that. And alongside that, we really want them to, to develop those ideas, come up with ideas and say, OK, if this is an idea that I've got, how can I make that into something? So we support them on that journey to really innovate and showcase their creativity in the websites that they go on to build. We also go into schools and deliver talks. Um, so we've done this a few times. One of the schools that we've been working quite closely with, the Earl Green School, um, with them, we've spoken to their um, GCSE and A-level students where we're then trying to showcase that visibility. What is it really like to work in technology? What do people in tech look like? And how could you really get involved? And that's really to ensure that they're choosing the right subjects at the right times so that they know this is something that I can do and I've got the right package really that I need to be in the process. Um, also, we've worked alongside conferences that are aimed at young people and at girls. Um, so one of those is being the YFYA conference. We worked alongside them last year and we're doing the same thing this year so that we can ensure that those um, children that attend can again see the visibility, but can really have an understanding around technology and around how it can be utilised. Some of the work that we're going to also be going into doing with um, the Elm Green is actually looking at how we can really put together a programme for those children and um, looks at, you know, come up with an idea, let's build something together and over a 12 week period, let's actually build a real business out of that. So they've got mentors and support and you can really see that visibility growing too. And then we actually do run mentor programs. So this is something that we're going to be launching in January this next year. Um, so with that, we'll be building out a network of mentors within Coding Black Females that will be going into schools and providing mentorship. Currently, we're looking at GCSC and A-level years, but what we're hoping is that we can do that at a broader scale so that we can really give people those mentors and supporters who can really guide them on the journey to understanding what software development is, what technology is, and how they can be involved. And um, we're really keen to see that, that they can have an actual point of contact if they want to develop those skills. And alongside um, the organisations that we're working with, they're looking at also providing some internships and programmes for their students too. So it's really making sure that we've got a package to see those mentorship programmes develop and progress. And that's it from me. So that's the work that we've been doing so far. Um, but again, alongside all the work we're doing for our, on our adult tracks, we can do those um, at different levels as well. So if you have any questions, more than happy to answer them at the end. Thank you. Thank you so much, Charlene. That was really interesting. And uh, it's really exciting to see all the different ways that um, younger girls and older girls, young women can engage with your organisation and get excited and be um, invited to a place where they can be fearless and be, develop confidence in coding. So really, really interesting. Um, thank you. Uh, we will come to questions at the end. So uh, we'll hand over to Ramat now. Let's just give her a draw. Hi. Hi. <laughs> that was amazing. It was like if by magic you just appeared there. That was incredible. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to um, share my screen as well. I've got a couple of slides. Um, so yeah. if I can be made presenter, that would be amazing. Bear with me. There we go. Okay. Handing Thank over you. the power to you now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, here we go. And let me know if you can see my screen. Yes. 
We can. Uh, and I will swap to that side. Great. Well, thank you very much for having me. Um, and thank you to the teachers that are watching this currently, and those that will be watching it in the future. My name is Ramat Tijani, um, and I wear a few different hats, um, as was mentioned at the start of this uh, webinar. Uh, one of the main hats that I wear is as an education program lead for AWS Get IT, which is one of the education programs that we run here at AWS. Um, I'm going to talk to you a bit today about education as a whole and my thoughts on education, but also on what we can do as individuals, uh, as teachers, as a society, to try to encourage more young people, but in particular girls, to consider a career in technology. So let me move on to the next slide. Um, can you still see my screen? Sorry. Can yeah. you still see my screen? Yeah. We can see your screen. It hasn't moved across yet. Oh, okay. Bear with me, because it says that, as no. technology does, it's like, <laughs> oh, it's it's paused, and I'm like, oh, don't pause yet. Um, okay. Hmm. I don't know what's going on. Technology isn't my friend today. All right, let me see if this is working. <laughs> Have another try. <laughs> okay. Can you see this slide about education? Yes. Fantastic. Thank you. So hopefully technology will continue to be my friend throughout the rest of my presentation. But I wanted to start with this quote um, from Nelson Mandela. Education is the most powerful weapon which we can use to change the world. Now, growing up, education was something that was integral to the way in which I lived life. Um, my parents were very strict about us going to school, making sure that we did the work outside school to ensure that we did well in school. And I feel super privileged and lucky to have had parents that would encourage me to, to do well at school. But there's also that education that we have in the school of life. And I genuinely believe that there's so much education that happens outside school that is just as important to the lives that we end up living. And so I want us to think a bit about the fact that whilst we will be working, we do work with students, there's a lot that goes on in society, in the world, that also um, impacts what they, they get to know and impacts the knowledge that they have. So, I'm very um, passionate about education being a tool for good and for us to be able to share different stories through education when it comes to technology in particular. So my next slide, oh, I think it's done it again. <laughs> this thing really doesn't like me. At the moment, we can, don't worry, Mara, we can see um, your notes as well. So I don't know if you want to try a problem. Don't worry. I don't know if you want to try showing, changing the display settings slightly. Okay. I'm going to stop sharing altogether um, and start again. Clearly, technology doesn't want to be on my side today, but that's okay. We're ready for technology to, <laughs> to mess up a little bit. Um, so I'm going to try sharing once again. And let's see if that works. Um, Is it sharing a slide? Can you see the slide? What do you want to do? Not at the moment, no. I, I can share your slides for you if that would help. Yeah, maybe, because it doesn't seem to I don't know what's going on with technology at the minute. No. I'm gonna stop sharing. Um yeah. I've stopped sharing, um, and I think I'm back to just being a participant. Yeah, I'm just just bringing them up, so bear with me. That's all right. I can also do it without slides. I'm very ready to do that. <laughs> Should we need to? Uh, yeah. Okay. If 
feel sorry for everyone watching and everyone that's going to be watching. They're just going to see my big face here for a, a couple of minutes. Um, <laughs> apologies, <laughs> peeps. <laughs> No problem. And Wendy, as I said, I can I can go on without slides. I'm um, fully prepared to do so. All right, here we go. Can you see? I uh, can. I can. Yes. Okay. I've got them as a PDF. Right. Still. That's no, that's... We'll go with that. So, <laughs> <laughs> if you could go to the next slide for me. Um, I had a question for everyone watching and the question is what do you want to be when you grow up it's a question that i still ask myself as a grown adult but it's a question that we often ask young people what's interesting to me about this question is that when i if i was to be asked that question or think back to what i wanted to do way back when when i was um, in school I actually wanted to be a paediatrician when I was about six, seven, and I wanted to be a paediatrician, which is a doctor for children, because I could spell the word. Most people couldn't at seven, uh, but also I wanted to look after everybody, and that's what doctors did. But I knew that I could potentially be a paediatrician because I knew that job existed. I knew what a paediatrician was. This, if we come back to this this moment in time. 85% of the jobs that will exist in 2030 don't have a title yet. We don't know what they're going to be yet. And that was noted in a report back in 2018. So it's really interesting to me that we keep asking this question to young people. What is it you want to be when you grow up? Keep asking questions to adults. People ask me the question because I still don't know what I want to be when I grow up. Um, and yet we don't yet know what those jobs are going to be or what they might what they might be, what the potential is. And so I think that we need to look at how we can encourage young people to consider the different industries in which jobs will exist, because we know what some of those industries are. And tech is a really big one. The beauty of tech is that tech touches every single industry you can think of. It doesn't matter what you've studied, it doesn't matter why you studied that subject, you can still find a job related in, to tech when you when 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 the students grow up. And I think that's a really important thing to be able to share with young people. I don't think they all necessarily know the power of technology. You could have studied art and still get a job in a technology company, or you could have studied science and still get a role which is related to technology. So I'm always encouraging our students to think about the fact that tech is the way forward in life. If you could go to the next slide for me. Now, when we think about technology, there are lots of narratives around what technology is and who works in technology. I think that there are a lot of narratives around the fact that tech is for certain types of people. And my role, is to ensure that we help change that narrative. This is one of the slides that we share when we do our presentations in schools. And it's a really important slide. It, it gives the various ambassadors that are from Amazon that go into schools the opportunity to tell their story. Now, for me, stories are key. They're what help young people see what they could potentially be. It helps young people recognize some of the challenges that others may have faced that they may be facing themselves and it helps them resonate with the fact that they too can become a woman in tech or a man in tech if that's the case so i'd love for us to think about the importance of sharing stories and sharing possibilities and one of the things that i think i'd love to encourage teachers to do but just everyone generally is to share the stories of people that are here, here and now. So we do a lot around like the history of technology or the history of you know the world. But there are a lot of people alive and kicking right now that are women in tech that are great role models and whose stories we can share more of. So I want you to think about how many of those stories do you share and how often do you share those stories? If you can move on to the next slide for me. Thank you. So I want to talk to you a little bit about the programme that I run. Um, 
at AWS and it's called AWS Get IT um, and that stands for Get Into Tech. It has two main focuses. One is about empowering our talent within the business to act as diversity advocates and ad advocates for technology within the workplace but also outside the workplace. Um, and then we take those ambassadors and they go into schools and act as mentors through a school competition that we run throughout the year. Now, the thing that I love about this particular program is that we have multiple touch points. We recognize that when it comes to working with young people and girls in particular, they need to see people in these roles over and over again. They need to know that it's not just a one-off. And so there are multiple touch points in which the school student will get to see um, an ambassador at the kickoff presentation when we introduce the competition to them and tell them our story at the throughout the process and then at our boot camps which we run and the ambassador can come back into the school and engage with the students again at the second visit when we look at their ideas and we challenge them a little bit to think about whether their ideas are actually thought through, whether or not they've, they've used some critical thinking skills, whether they've done the teamwork, whether they've thought about the challenge properly. And then if the, the students are successful and make it to the semi-finals, we support them there again and again at the final. So a student could have up to five different touch points with the same ambassador or an ambassador within Amazon to help them really see that it is possible. It's not just a made up story from someone that you've met once and then never seen again. And that for me is really important. The next thing that we, we do is we work with the alumni students. So the students that go through the program and we run this program for year eight students at present, but when they reach year nine, we work with them on their active citizenship rather. How can those students help support the upcoming students throughout the competition? How can we help them to gain leadership skills? And also, how can we showcase to them that there are other women in technology? So we have panels in which we invite the alumni students to get involved and to meet women within AWS and Amazon and outside as well from our partners and our um, customers as well. So if you can uh, share the next slide for me. Ah, okay, cool. I added one extra slide um, before I sent you, after I sent you the slide. So um, the extra slide before my thank yous. <laughs> Simply have the question, what story will you tell? And I want you to think about the stories that we tell our young people. How can we encourage them to learn more about people that are currently in tech that do exist? There are plenty of women in tech there are not enough of us but there are women in tech and we can share those stories so that when other young people are looking at potentially coming into the tech industry they can say oh yeah i remember the story of that woman that did abc or i remember the time my teacher told me a story about xyz so i really want to encourage you to think about those stories because the current stories are more inclusive and more diverse than our historical stories because currently the world is more diverse and we're sharing more of those, those stories. Challenge your students to find more stories that resonate with them. And I'm challenging you to share your story. Students love stories. They want to know why we are teaching tech. They want to know what the possibilities are. And if you have the permission to do so, share other people's stories. Um, I always say if you have the permission to do so, because if not, it's not your story to share. But with that, I'd like to end and say thank you for listening. Thank you for bearing with me when technology decided it didn't want to be my friend. Um, and I will hand back over to Wendy. Thank you so much, Ranat. Um, we got there in the end. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is the, the joys of working in tech, as I'm sure Indeed. all the people watching can also relate to. Uh, bear with me. I think we all need a half term the, the, tech, the tech as well right okay um suzanne there, i think i can see a question popped up i don't know if you want to go to the question now um if it is for ramat um while i just look yeah. to change presenters because it sometimes it's quite yeah. nice to so, um, so uh 
uh, by the way, I just want to say I really like the, the simple, thought-provoking questions that you that you ask through that. It's, it's really, really good. Isn't it? It's easy then to relate to, isn't it? But um, Esther says, is there a reason for your programme being for year eight students? Um, she said, uh, there is already a government competition on cyber security for year eight girls, and it'd be great to have something for year seven or year nine. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we did a lot of research before we actually we launched the programme and we piloted it before um, we started running it. So it's been running in the UK in particular for the last, this year is the fourth year that we're now running it in the UK. Um, the second year that we're running it in, in Ireland um, and in other parts of Europe. The research that we've done suggests that year eight is the right time in which to help sow those seeds in the minds of young people, in young girls in particular. It's the, it's the time in which they are starting to think about what it is they might want to do, they're not quite sure, they haven't quite reached that year nine stage where they're thinking about their subjects with GCSEs yet, but they are starting to be more influenced by um, what the world is telling them they should or shouldn't be doing. And so the research suggests that that's a really good time to do it. And there is this other program that um, exists, and I know it is also for UH students, and it's probably for the same reason, to be honest. But one of the things that our program is really keen on promoting is the idea of design thinking. And so there's no actual coding involved in the main program. The alumni students, absolutely, we're, we're working on, on um, extending the programme so that there's a bit more of a technical element. But our programme is actually focusing on the design thinking skills that students need to have that also open them up to the idea of innovation and possibility. And so in coming up with the idea of designing an app, they're kind of having to work with each other on critical thinking, on presentation skills, but also on solving a problem. And that's what you'll end up doing in life anyway. Um, and so we we want to start them off with that design thinking piece rather than the technical piece. And then the alumni students tap into that technical piece, technical piece rather. I hope that helps answer the question. Thank it you. does, thank you. So research, research is the reason. So, so thank you for that. We're gonna move swiftly on because um, time is ticking by as it always does when you're a getting into these interesting conversations. Um, but I'm handing over to Hayley now. Brilliant, you're sharing your screen. And um, over to you, thank you so much. Thank you, uh, and thank you, Wendy, for that introduction um, previously. I think um, probably most relevant for this afternoon in terms of introductions is that I am madly passionate about improving the diversity of representation in technology. So today I'm gonna to talk about why and then I'm also going to share some ideas as to how I think as educators and parents, we can encourage more females to pursue computing in their education and then also subsequently a career in technology. So moving swiftly on, <laughs> um, that is me <laughs> and my two little girls. Uh, I don't know who the guy is, but potentially he's my husband. <laughs> um, so. Next, I'm going to say, I've just put this slide up here actually to say it's actually really crazy to think about um, the new technologies that have entered our lives just in the last 10 years. So, you know, the, the thought that we now have AI assistants like Alexa, electric cars, wearable devices that, you know, monitor our, our health, we have, you know, home based genetics testing, we have robots that pick, pack, and deliver and drones have even made their way onto terrestrial TV cartoons that my little ones watch. And, you know, I think it's important to say that we're only just at the beginning. So technology, you know, such as artificial intelligence, robotics, 3D printing, virtual reality, they are set to continue to change our everyday and working lives dramatically. Technology is going to be at the heart of how we tackle climate change, how we improve healthcare, how we make medical breakthroughs, how we improve access to education, and the list goes on. So my question is, in terms of why, why wouldn't we want the teams developing these technological innovations to be representative of our population, which is 50% female? And why would we not want those females developing those innovations to equally reap the rewards of what is set to be one of the most lucrative professions? 
and given the purpose of education like Ramat talked about before is to provide the foundation for the rest of their lives why would we not want to equip all children to have an equal understanding of what is at the heart of the set you know of their everyday lives in the world around them but despite these kind of no-brainers today you know as we as uh, Charlene touched upon about 10 percent of technology leaders in the uk are female about you know 25 to 30 percent of all technology jobs are held by females but worse still in 2020 i think they said about 20 percent of the total number of gcse computer science students were girls so we still have a way to go to get to that 50 percent and I'm hoping that's why everybody joined this webinar to think about some practical ideas that you could take back into the classroom. So what I'm gonna to share today are based on my personal experiences and also personal experience of others that you know I've spoken to over the ideas. It's, they're absolutely not a definitive list. So I'm really looking forward and I'm hoping that some people can share their thoughts as well and if anyone is listening um, after this talk, please feel free to reach out for any kind of further information. So the five points that I listed, the first one being start early. So there are two elements to what I mean by... Oh. Carry on, Katie. I don't know what happened there. Carry on. I think, Matt, I think you're not on mute. So I, I will carry on anyway. So um, as I said, I think there are two elements to what I mean by starting early. So one is about that early familiarization of terms and those foundational concepts, just like we do with other subjects. So it becomes part of their standard vocabulary and thinking and doesn't become, you know, an alien term that they get introduced to in high school. And I'm also a big advocate of physical computing as well you know, which research, especially recent research, has shown that girls engage with more. So, for example, with both my girls, I started to introduce electronics at craft time when they were about the age of three. So we'd add, you know, an LED here, we'd add a buzzer here to toilet rolls or Play-Doh. Then I started to introduce the notion of electricity and circuits. They're six and four now. And we're now just starting in conversation to talk about how we could control the lights and the directions of wheels linking it to the input output process and it's actually amazing to see the impact that just a couple of leds and normalizing the words like light emitting diode and algorithm has so when my girls come home from school now they ask to they often ask actually <laughs> when i just want to concentrate to make a creation which translated means they want to craft, but they want to craft with lights and movement and some basic coding. They don't come home and ask to code, they come home and ask to create, which I think is really telling in itself. And then when we're talking about high school students, you know, I see lots of requests, and I think from what you talk, touched upon it then, I see lots of requests coming through STEM learning for career talks in year nine and 10. But I think we should do more to give hands-on taster sessions and hackathons to from year seven so that they actually have time to try and process before they need to start to make some uh, decisions. And the second element of what I mean by start early is, you know, Charlene touched upon it as well, was to introduce role models that are relatable before stereotypes start to creep in and also to open their eyes to how technology is already and can make the world a more better place. So um, I'm gonna go on to this slide. So, you know, when we hear of role models, you know, I hear of lots of people talking about Ada Lovelace and Grace Hopper. And then when we talk about today, we talk about Elon Musk and the Mark Zuckerbergs. But how about we change that rhetoric to talk about the Susans, the Cheryls, the Lisas, the supermodels like Carly Kloss that are actually learning to code. And then the people like Chantelle and Christine who are disrupting the bio and ecotech industries. And then we've also got lots of influences that especially in high school, they could relate to who are sharing their tech journeys and also encouraging girls to join them on that journey. As you say that, you know, what's the, um, the adage, as they say, you can't be what you can't see. 
which um, I think we've all touched upon on this call so far. And that links to my next point, which is to open the eyes to the technology um, advancements that already exist today, just outside of their frame of reference. Um, so this slide that I've just put up here is a talk that I take to secondary school pupils. Um, it's actually a little bit outdated now already, which <laughs> just proves the point. Um, I start out in that talk by talking and describing a day in my life, which incorporates all of the things that I see on this slide. So like I take personalized vitamins based on the output of my morning visit to the toilet. Um, um, a taxi is pre-ordered based on the weather in my commute. I then ask them at the end of that talk if they think any of this exists already. And at the end, they're very shocked to find that it all does. And then they start talking, they start asking questions, they start talking to their friends, and they also start taking those stories home, which leads me on to the next point, um, which I think is key, which is around influence. So I think there's something to be said about changing you know, the rhetoric at home too. Um, and Charlene, you made a really interesting point as well around how the parents have started, if they've gone to the courses, have started to get children interested as well. And I think that's, you know, that is the point. I think it's really interesting that whilst teachers, you know, we may have received training on computing and design and technology, but parents haven't. And their frame of reference is that is you know just the technology that they use and also what they were taught at school so given you know that parents and families tend to have the greatest influence on um, a young person's choice i think we should as educators look somehow at helping change or at least enrich that rhetoric at home for example if someone were to ask about um design and technology they may start talking about woodwork um, if you know a child was to ask a parent about computer science, they may say they weren't taught it at school. So I think that there's something that you know maybe between STEM learning and BCS that we could create and help you know as schools to share it with their families to open their eyes so that they're better equipped to have encouraging and relevant conversations with their daughters. You know whether it's vision evenings alongside parents evenings or family hackathons i think you know there's something there that actually we need to start bringing those to the school and the parents together to have those conversations and then finally the point that i've got here is about real connections um, and what i mean here is about linking technology to other subjects to start to demonstrate how computing has relevancy across all subjects and work industries. And this is where I find particularly with girls that they start to make that connection. So again, on the following slides, I've got some um, slides that I've shared with schools and pupils previously. Um, for example, when we talk about the healthcare and we say it's changing, these are actual screenshots of an app I used to monitor my blood test due to a history of heart disease in my family. Um, Dr, I think you can see Dr. Busman is a virtual but real GP. So, you know, if somebody has that interest in um, and they want to be a doctor, it's important to show how technology is changing, you know, some of those professions and why it's important to understand how this works and also how data is relevant too. Um, and then again, in biology or if someone wants to be a doctor potentially show them this uh, video of versius which is the heart surgery robot that i think may have already been approved now by the nhs to be used um for real life which i always find crazy and then in fashion if they want to talk about fashion we can talk about the sustainable materials and um, like these trainers are made from ocean waste and Lumia as well is a smart material that, that is heat sensitive, so warms up um, the jacket depending on the uh, body temperature of somebody as well. Again, you know, bringing together computing sensors and the data that will be required in the fashion industry going forward. Um, if they want to talk about uh, retail, we can start to talk about you know, the smart mirror that is um, here that was developed for Marks and Spencers. Um, and we can start to talk about you know how um gesture technology may be used to augment a customer 
how it could make recommendations based on their previous purchases of clothes that would fit with the item that they want to try on, for example. Um, events, this is a picture of us at um, the forest where the Gruffalo is uh, embedded in this augmented reality. So um, again, if people are, if, um, if in school you're talking about somebody wanting to go into events, I think it's important to say how experiences may also be virtual, they may also be augmented. Um, an example might be that, you know, Google wants to be um, the Netflix, I think they've said, of gaming and are currently building a virtual stadium dubbed Stadia, I think it's called, um, where the games can be played anywhere from people's bedrooms. Um, and then, you know, a common thing that you'll all hear is about people wanting to be YouTubers too. So a, a good example is, you know, when we think of YouTube and Netflix, how again can you relate computing to those careers and things that are in people's mind? We can talk about um, Netflix, you know, not being a traditional um, media company or entertainment company. Um, a really good example was how they produced um, the House of Cards, which was six years of data analysis to work out exactly when we as viewers were liking particular things that we were watching, when were we pausing so they could perfect the perfect series based on what our behaviours had been for those past six years, um, which I also think is crazy. But the point is, the list goes on. Um, and my point here is just to make it very real and relatable, to give them examples of how technology is changing everyday lives and therefore why having that knowledge in computer science is relevant regardless of what industry um, or where they want to take their lives. So yes, that was a farming one as well. So again, in summary, I just say that um, first of all, obviously, we just need to level that playing field. I think we all agree that we need to smash those stereotypes, as I say. But I think the bit that we definitely need to do more of is open their eyes and broaden their horizons so they can see what is already in existence in terms of technological advancements outside of their sphere of influence. And then lastly, obviously, um, help parents as well in the home to have those encouraging conversations. But in general, we just need to help them imagine a future and one where they're driving positive change about something that they're passionate about and that's it thank you thank you so much wow i think i could listen for at least another hour <laughs> to what you were saying it was absolutely brilliant thank you and all the different examples that you used as well um just so, so helpful uh, and talking about having those conversations in the home um, with with your girls, if you have girls at home, um, as well as in the classroom um, yeah. are absolutely fantastic. So just thanks for, for bringing lots of ideas um, to uh, this webinar this afternoon. And of course, to our other two presenters who are still there, just in the background, but as if they can come back onto the screen. We've gone slightly over time, but I didn't want to, jump in and stop you because you're in full flow and um, as I say it was so interesting. Um, Suzanne, I think there was one other question uh, that was brought um, from Sharifa that was for uh, Ramat. So I don't know if we, you could kind of answer it in, in as brief possible, <laughs> as brief as possible, but I don't want to miss that before we finish. Yeah, it's, it's um, I mean, we've got we've got a couple of questions and things, but that, this one, I think, yeah, if you can answer this one, it'd be great. Um, Sharifa says, are there programs with AWS already running? And, um, you know, how do we register with the program and that kind of thing? So just sort of quick, how do we get there? Uh, Ramat's on mute. Um, Oh, let's have a look. Hang on. There we go. We're sending you an unmute request. Sorry, man. That, that was because we heard your microphone on while Hayley was. Sorry, and apologies about that. You didn't realise it was a more permanent thing. Apologies. No, that's all right. I'm, I left the room, and my colleague came in and was like, "I was on my phone, and I was you're off mute," and I was like, "Oh dear life." So apologies, um, Matt. But yeah, in terms of the program, um, the program is currently running, um, and we start at the beginning of each school year. 
uh, we, if you do a Google search of AWS Get IT, it should come up. Um, and if you, I can share a link with you, you the team to, to send out to, to schools after where you can register your interest for, for next year's program. We start the recruitment process or we open the doors again for schools at the end of, well, the middle of uh, the third, third school term. So kind of like June-ish. Uh, so yeah, we'd love to talk to anyone that's interested in, in the program. Brilliant, so, thanks Ramat. Okay, well, uh, thanks for joining us today. A special thanks to Charlene, to Ramat and to Hayley for presenting. Uh, please can I encourage you to share your personal highlights from today's session via social media using the hashtag Kazinspire. I've already been on Twitter um, and I've been sharing my personal highlights. Um, at the end of this webinar, a short survey will appear on your screen and we'd be really grateful if you could take a few minutes to complete it. Please continue to spread the word about Kaz Inspire. We're hosting further Kaz Inspire sessions all the way through into 2022. And I'm really excited to tell you that hot off the press, uh, we've got our Kaz Inspire sessions for after half term. They've just gone live. Um, we're running things slightly differently. So we're gonna have both the primary and the secondary sessions running on a Wednesday. We've shortened the session slightly, so they're from four to half four, um, because we know how busy teachers are, and we'd love you to join us. And we kick off on Wednesday, the 3rd of November, and we've got two exciting sessions planned. The primary one is focusing on crumbles, and the secondary one is focusing on microbits, because as you may know, um, the computing hubs, the NCCE, are loaning out that kit, and we're going to be hearing from some teachers um, who've already borrowed it. Um, so do go onto the CAS website. At the top of the events page, there's a massive banner, and there's a link there, and that takes you to all the sessions that are planned, and you can book on to as many that you're interested in. And that's all from me. And uh, just to say thank you so much for joining, and we hope to see you next time. Goodbye.